Hi there, this is Derek from Pacific Coast Auto here in Japan. We're taking a look at a, an Austin Mini. This one here bought from auction in Japan uh, for export to the USA. Now, Japan is a great place to buy the Minis from. Lots of them here, and prices are generally pretty reasonable. This one here is a bit of a mystery Mini because it looks like it was an imported model. If you take a look at the uh, back section here, uh, we got the VIN number here. And then we also have a uh, special plate on here for registering a, an otherwise non-compliant vehicle, sort of like a kit car VIN number. Now you would still register this one under the regular VIN number, but it looks like this was imported into Japan back in 1997. The date on Japanese registration calls this a 97, as is always the case here in Japan. I'm just gonna turn the engine off because it's loud. And uh, yeah, so if it was imported in 97, they would call this a 97 on Japanese registration, but I believe this is an earlier Model 1. If you take a look at the engine, though, it does look like a 97 engine. You do have the um, coil packs instead of distributor, for one. There's fuel injected. This one has AC in it, but it was only the Japanese models that ca came with the original AC. And so that was retrofitted and actually very nicely installed. The Japanese ones usually are on an angle here, and it's kind of like, it looks like it doesn't really fit with the car. This one's also 134A, and I'm not sure when they changed over to a 134, but I believe the first ones were R12s. Looks like it has an aftermarket air filter. I'm not sure of the other modifications. Everything else looks standard. It's a 1.3 liter engine, push and pull style fan on this side. Coolant looks okay, oil looks okay. Fun fact, the oil with the engine and the transmission are shared in the same sump. Okay, so I'm going to lower the hood here. This is all basically to see under here. If you do want to know what kind of Mini this is, I recommend looking at the VIN number and then checking out with the people who know an awful lot about the Minis because um, it's quite complicated. They made these from 1959 until 2000, yeah, the year 2000. And so there are many, many, many different versions of them. This one here has fender mirrors and then has the mirror block off like the Japanese models had. You can see this is where the original mirrors would have gone. Japanese one's got the mirrors there. And so it does have a kind of a history that is a little bit interesting. That's something that's going to need to be checked. Now, this is a post-purchase inspection video. It's already been sold. This isn't a vehicle for sale. If you are curious about this sort of thing, I recommend you check out our website. There's a link to that in the description. I'm just going to put in my password here, so don't look. Like last time, I forgot to... Uh -huh. I actually showed my password on camera and had to blank it out after. Okay, so, 1997, a Mini 1300cc. Um, heritage. They call this a Mini Heritage version. Auction rate R, because it's been in an accident. Interior C, aftermarket exhaust, total collection box. 117, 551 kilometers, and this is the original blue color of it. The odometer is five digits and has gone around once, according to the seller, so it says 117, 551. And judging by the amount of wear on it, that looks about accurate, I would say. As you can see, the body here is all very good, but paint cracks on the roof. Let me just show you that. It may be a little bit hard to see, but if you look in this area, you'll be able to see them. If we can get a focus, that is. Okay, now it says headliner is saggy. It is a little bit saggy, but I notice it's more dirty than it is saggy, as you can see. Uh, seat is saggy and has a rip. Interior is dirty and scratched. Center floor has a dent and scratched. Oil minor leak. You could probably have seen that around the valve cover. Um, inner panel is dented. That's accident damage. It was in an accident in the front, aftermarket steering wheel, very scratches and dents, and the roof is not glossy. Now, it doesn't have replacement of any parts here, and so it looks like a very minor accident, and to me this wouldn't be an issue. If you are uh, concerned about cars that have been in accidents, you can choose which cars you want to bid on. Um, the person who bought this had decided it wasn't a big deal, and I agree with that. The body, extremely good, as you can see, no dents, minor scratches here, but really they're, they're almost nothing. The car as a whole, really good looking. The interior seat rip, that's probably my biggest problem with it. Other than that, it's just a fantastic car and um, really good color. I quite like it. So let's do the once around here. 
And minis are tiny, tiny little cars, and so they look so interesting on the street when they're driving, especially in the USA where uh, they made minis in the States, but they didn't make that many of them there. Most of the ones that are in the States now are imports from Japan, I would say. And the US was weird. They tried to fix them for crash standards by hammering metal plates into the corners, if you can believe that. Look it up. It's kind of kind of interesting. These ones here are the non-metal plate in the corner version. Fuel injected one will give you less headaches than the carburetor one and won't smell like gasoline all the time. But it's still a mini and minis require love and a little bit of frustration in order to be the owner of one. Okay, so this this light looks like it's been replaced at some point, or maybe the other one does, because this one's a little bit cloudier inside. And since it's a, it's a glass light, the lens itself doesn't get cloudy. Also, the rings around the headlights are a little bit tarnished, and there's some water inside this marker. And this middle piece doesn't line up with the side piece. That's not necessarily a hood problem, though, because this piece of trim gets screwed onto a piece of metal and those screws can over time get loose and shift where this and where this sit. So it's very common on minis for those not to line up exactly. Aftermarket grills and bumpers and stuff like that are all really easy to find. Look, the chassis hooks, both of them are screwed into it. And there's your sump with a nice little sump guard. Unlike my 1972 model, didn't have one of those. So you run over a bump and you can pop a hole in the bottom of your engine. Luckily, I never did. So it looks like maybe a little bit of paint fade right there. And the back section has some paint fade that wasn't mentioned on the auction sheet. There's some peeling here. As a whole, I'm pretty happy though. Nice side panels, no rust on the sills, no rust on the doors. It has fender flares, but these are kind of the minor ones. And it looks a little bit weird having this chrome piece that goes around and kind of separated around here. But that's kind of how they look like from the factory. They use a, a flat piece of metal and then expect it to go around corners. I mean like bend, but it doesn't actually stick in there properly. It's just one of the quirky things about minis, I guess. The design of the mini is fantastic. It gives a relatively large amount of space inside for the size of the vehicle. It's an awkward seating position if you're used to kind of the stretched out leg style, but it, you have room in the back, much more room in the back than one of those. This one here is roughly the same size, but uh, doesn't have any seats in the back. And you get a fair amount of room in the back for the trunk area as well. And this is standard. They don't come, they come with this like floppy piece of cardboard. That's, that's mini style. Okay, larger fuel tank in this one, I think it's five and a half gallon. Five and a half gallon. How many is that in liters? Times that by 3.78. Okay, so let's go to the interior now. And no signs of rust along here. These will rot out pretty soon. Okay. Standard floor cards, but um, this piece here is not on all of them. It's on the later model ones, I believe, but you're gonna have to look into that. I don't know. So many different minis. So hard to tell which one is which. Okay, so have a look at the seat here. These are leather seats, so leather can be repaired. You can see some wrinkles and some cracking in it. And then there's a tear right here in the back. Passenger seat is in better condition. And then it has a spot right here that is missing some of the dye. Getting into the back seat. Now you can go like this to get into the back. It's a little bit of a squeeze to get in there, but it's not impossible. And then if you need extra room, there's a way you can lift up the bottom of the seat too. You'll get used to it if it's your car, but it's not impossible to get into one of these. Now I've got this front seat in the full back position. And as you can see, it fits. These ones have shoulder belts. The shoulder belts only became a thing later on. Originally it was lap belts in here. And these windows don't pop out on the later model ones. So I don't know what year they switched over for that, but it might have been around 95 to 96. Okay. Oh, you know what? I see there's a sticker up there that has an airbag logo on it. Airbag came in in 96. So there's a good chance this was an imported one, but a 96 or 97 model. 
and then the steering wheel has been moved over to a non-airbag version. So we have disc brakes on this one. Oh, a little bit of cloudiness in the in the windshield. Kind of a common thing on these. And windshields can be replaced by yourself. You don't need to pay a company because it's that old school style that has a bead pushed into a rubber gasket. Kind of cool. Okay, so open here, go in. The AC works and is nice and strong. In fact, one of the strongest AC is in any of the minis that I've seen before. And it doesn't have a cluttered box in here like the Japanese ones do. And so quite good looking. I might be wrong in that the Japanese ones were the only ones with the AC, but I don't know. These were made in so many different markets and there could be market specific versions. Floor mats look like they're aftermarket and are curly. Shifting feels good. Nice wooden mini shift knob. It says mini upside down. Let's turn that around. Now you can move it though. And if you tighten it, it's upside down. That would annoy me. Steering wheel is fair, but not the best. You can see some wear on here. You can refinish it if you want. You can sand it down and then and then put new lacquer on. And it looks like this is a little bit loose too. Typical mini. Oh, and th there's a cover on top of what used to be wood. Like if you open this up, you can see that it used to be wood. And it, that piece is prone to cracking. And so maybe they covered it up because they didn't like the cracks in it. Also, maybe this is a mini thing because I've seen this a few times, a wiper scratch here. Okay, engine starts up easily. Don't have to pump the pedal because it's fuel injected. Like Heber is saying, it's too hot inside. It's raining right now. Camera, get with the program, it shouldn't be too hot. It is like 30 degrees and rainy and humid though. Anyways, that's the end of the story of this Mini. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, check out our website. It has a lot of information on it. So, there you go. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.